Hi, welcome to our Daily Encounter. Today we begin the book of Proverbs. And the book of Proverbs is focused on wisdom, living a wise life. And it's made up of 31 chapters. And a lot of people have made the habit of reading one chapter a day. And if you do so, you'll read one chapter a day and you'll get through the book of Proverbs every month. Um, since many months uh, comprise of 31 days, um, that is definitely doable. And, you know, if you guys wanted to add this to your daily reading, it would definitely be a good addition. Uh, do your daily reading maybe in the morning and read a chapter of Proverbs in the evening or vice versa. Um, but it is a good book, a good book to return back to. If you're not in it every day, at least every once in a while, come back to it because it is so full of wise sayings. The book of Proverbs is primarily written by Solomon. Chapter 1 and verse 1 says the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. But we do have some of the Psalms written by Agur and by Lemuel. And... Uh, together, all of these uh, comprise the book of uh, Proverbs. One thing to remember as you read the book of Proverbs is that the book of Proverbs is, is made up of general statements. You'll come across several statements that they sound very absolute in the way that they're written, uh, but we know in practice there are sometimes exceptions to what's being said. Um, but what, again, what they're, the writers of Proverbs are saying are general truths, things that are generally true. Um, and so it's important to understand that you don't want to get too, um, go too far with some of these and, and not acknowledge the fact that there are exceptions. Remember Job's friends, they, they knew a lot of general truths, but they were applying it to Job's specific um, circumstance and so they stretched it a little too far we don't want to do that with the book of Proverbs just remember that these are general truths now the first three chapters which is our reading this morning or this day today depending on when you're reading it um, has basically six truths about wisdom contained just in these three chapters and of course there's a whole lot more Perhaps that could be taken out of these, but these are the ones that stuck out to me. Six truths about wisdom, and of course we have a short devotion, so we can't go into these in much detail, but we do want to touch on these uh, in the devotion. The first thing we learn about wisdom, or one of the first things we learn, is in chapter 1, where Solomon warns against not following wisdom. Uh, as a matter of fact, you have wisdom being personified by a woman crying out in the streets and she talks about those who don't listen to her verse 24 it says because I called and you refused I stretched out my hand and no one paid attention and you neglected all my counsel and did not want my reproof so this is speaking against those who don't follow after wisdom they it's not that they don't know wisdom it's not that um, they haven't been taught by wisdom, but that they wouldn't listen to wisdom. And how often do we do that? And I know I do that quite often. More times than, than uh, I, I would like for it to be, of course. Uh, times when you know one course of action is a wise choice, but you go the complete opposite direction. There's something inside of you telling you, hey, either you need to do this or don't do this, and you end up doing the opposite. It's kind of like uh, rejecting good advice. Somebody comes up to you and they give you really good sound advice about something, and you just ignore it and do the opposite. Um, sometimes the Lord gives us wisdom in our hearts, in particular circumstances, and we just neglect it. We just don't follow it, maybe because it's not in line with what we want, what we desire. Maybe it's, the wise thing is not the convenient thing for us. And so we walk the other way. Now this is wisdom crying out saying, hey, listen to me, I'm calling to you, don't refuse what I'm telling you. 
follow after me. Your life will be better if you do. And your life is going to be in, in uh, trouble if you don't. So we need to not only listen to wisdom, but also follow it. And I, I really like that this truth is right there at the beginning of Proverbs because uh, it's good to have that truth nailed down right at the get-go. Because if you're not, and, and if I'm not of the attitude of, hey, I want to follow wisdom. I, I not just want to have wisdom, but I want to follow it. If you don't have, and I don't have that type of attitude, the rest of the book of Proverbs will be meaningless to it, to you. It will be maybe some neat sayings, maybe some good thoughts, but it will have no impact on your life and my life. We have to want to actually put these things into practice. We don't want wisdom just yelling at us and then us stopping our ears. So that's the first truth. The second truth we'll bring out is that we need to remember wisdom. In chapter 3 and verse 1 it says, My son, do not forget my teaching but let your heart keep my commandments. Here Solomon didn't want the one that he was teaching to forget the wisdom that he was imparting to them. And that's something that we have to guard against ourselves. Um, it's not only bad to ne uh, neglect wisdom and not listen to wisdom, but it's also bad to forget wisdom. To forget the wisdom maybe that your parents taught you. Uh, the good teachings that they taught you as you grew up. To forget what the scriptures say. Maybe because we neglect being in the Bible on a day-to-day -day basis. We forget maybe what the Bible says or it becomes very faint in our minds. Uh, maybe we forget those hard-knock lessons that we've had in our lives. And we've kind of let that fade in our minds. And so... Wisdom kind of gets the back door in our minds, and we forget. And wisdom forgotten really doesn't do us any good, does it? Uh, we need to remember the wisdom that we have gained in the past and use it for the present. Third truth is that God gives wisdom. God is the one who gives us wisdom. In verse 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. So we need to recognize that God gives us wisdom. We, a lot of times, think that a particular course of action is the right way to go. We think we are being wise in the, way, in the choices that we're making in our lives. But that's not always the case. Because sometimes what we think is a wise choice is really deep down just what we really want. Just It's just our desire and what's convenient for us. And it's not really wisdom itself. It's, it's wisdom or it's, 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 a, it's a false wisdom. It's something that it's a desire of ours or something that we want that's just decorated in wisdom. But it's not truly wisdom itself. God is the true source of wisdom. And so with every choice that we make and every decision... We need to seek the Lord's counsel. Seek the Lord's wisdom. We know James chapter 1 tells us that the Lord gives wisdom to everyone who asks. And He gives it liberally, freely, without, without, being, uh, without grudging. Uh, he really wants to give us wisdom. He is the one that imparts wisdom to us. And we should seek Him and not lean upon our own understanding. Then the fourth truth about wisdom is that wisdom is very profitable. Verse 13 of chapter 3, How blessed is the man who finds wisdom, and the man who gains understanding. For her profit is better than the profit of silver, and her gain better than fine gold. She is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire compares with her. Long life is in her right hand, and in her left hand are riches and honors. Honor. Her ways are pl pleasant ways, and all her paths are peace. And it goes on. So she's just, it's basically just saying that wisdom is very profitable. To seek after wisdom is the greatest thing. Better than silver and gold. Better than seeking after honor. A strange thing happens when you seek wisdom and you don't seek just uh, material possessions and you know prestige and things. When you're just seeking after wisdom, a lot of times, again we're speaking generally here, generally speaking, seeking after wisdom will 
benefit you materially and will bring you honor. Uh, but that's not the main goal. The main goal is to have wisdom. And if you have wisdom, it's even better than all those things. So if you have wisdom without all those things, you still have the better deal. And so wisdom is a very profitable thing. Another truth uh, in these chapters is that sometimes wisdom is brought about through discipline. In chapter 3 and verse 11, he says, My son, do not reject the discipline of the Lord, or loathe his re reproof. For whom the Lord loves, he reproves, and even as a father corrects the son in whom he delights. So we get a lot of wisdom just by being disciplined, by feeling the effects of our mistakes. I mean, talk about learning something the hard way. And so much of what we learn is learned the hard way. Um, you stick your hand on a stove top that's turned on, uh, you usually don't have to do that too many times before you learn not to do it again. Um, and that's true with a lot of things in our lives. And when we follow after our own ways and our own paths and there's no fear of the Lord in us, uh, it won't take long before uh, we realize that that is not the best path. Uh, if we're sensitive to those things, if we don't have a hard heart, uh, we'll see that uh, the ways of the Lord are the best ways and wisdom is always the right way to go. And then we see uh, God as the source of wisdom. In verse 19 of chapter 3 it says, The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding he established the heavens. By his knowledge the deeps were broken up and the skies dripped with dew. So we already saw how God is the one who gives us wisdom. But it even goes deeper than that. He is actually the very source of wisdom. You know, someone can give you a cup of water, but they're not the source of the water. They can just, they get it from wherever the source is and bring it to you. Um, but God is both when it comes to wisdom. He both gives us wisdom and is the source of wisdom. And so that just, uh, that just brings the truth out even more perfectly that we need to lean upon God for wisdom and to know how precious wisdom is that it was the very thing that God used to bring about the creation around us so these are some truths about wisdom these are some things that we can learn about uh, wisdom and, and I'm glad again that these truths here are at the beginning because it will help us as we proceed through the rest of the book of Proverbs to remember that we need wisdom, but we also need to follow wisdom. Otherwise, wisdom is of no good to us. And that we need to remember wisdom and not forget it. That God is the one who gives us wisdom. That wisdom oftentimes is, is obtained through discipline. That wisdom is very profitable. And that God is the source of all wisdom. So, let's just think about these things today. And think about... How much do we desire wisdom? Do we really have a heart for wisdom? It will, re it will really uh, change the way you approach this book. The amount of desire you have for wisdom will affect how much you get out of the book of Proverbs. So let's start today. Let's start today by conjuring up in our hearts a deep longing and thirst for wisdom. So that we can get the most out of this, this book of Proverbs uh, while we are in it. Well, thank you guys for listening in today. Love you guys. Hope you have a great day. God bless.